es la historia de cómo conocí a tu padre. Era difícil vivir el momento en 2022. ¡Sí! Siempre había otro lugar donde estar, otra persona con la que estar. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, we've, we've used this before. I feel like How I Met Your Father is, is, has the same soul as How I Met Your father, Mother. We're, we're telling a similar story in a similar style, but it became very apparent early on that it was not the same show. We couldn't make the same show. We couldn't even hope to, to make the same show. Um, the world has moved on since 2005. The world is dating has moved on since 2005. And I think we needed a show um, that reflected that. Well, I just noticed this and um, it was because it was pointed out to me, but apparently in my apartment, we have a pineapple cutting board. Oh, and I you didn't pick up on that. I, I never, I was so focused on my lines in my apartment, but we have that. And then um, there was a moment in uh, the Dirty 30 episode where Jesse did the Have You Met and it was Ellen. Mm -hmm. um, and then what else? We have, there are, there are sprinkles throughout. Yeah. yeah. There, are, there are some things that we're not allowed to talk about. There are some things that we weren't even told, but we still know we're not allowed to talk about. Um, yeah, there's certainly going to be some things throughout uh, season one, um, at least, uh, that fans of the original will be able to go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's, cool. the, that's the reaction that I think you'll be getting. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. Right? And, you know, there are things that the production designers and everybody did that like, kind of are in the background. Some people notice, some people don't. But I think the generalized idea is that, yes, we do like throwbacks and we like talk about that and bring references into it. But since it's season one and we're trying to get on our own two feet with the show, uh, season two, which is now happening, uh, will have a lot more of, of that kind yeah. of throwback life. Who got that one? Life is just funny. Life is just funny and we are playing it so real that it's hilarious. And I think that's why it's relatable. We're not trying to hit it on the joke. I think the writing is in itself and we're literally just performing it as these young adults trying to figure it out like everyone else in the world. And it's almost relieving to see that on screen because you feel like you're not alone, it's relatable. So I think that's what's funny about it. And I think that's why we love gifts and memes so much, especially the ones that are very dark um, about like not working or being lazy or being 30 and it's still in your slippers. It's like, oh, I do that, that's relatable. It's funny, just like, you know, we do on the show. Well, in my case, I really, what I love about Sid is that this guy is like constantly bolstering his friends, loyal to his friends, supporting his friends. You know what I'm saying? I, I really look up to that about Sid. Like that's a really good quality in a person. And what I find hilarious about him is that, you know, this dude just goes and does things without looking or for any kind of, how am I going to actually do this kind of thing? Like he dropped out of, med school and went and bought a bar doesn't know how to kind of bar or anything but he's brave enough at that moment in his life to go do that you know, he's brave enough to be in a long distance relationship with uh, uh with hannah which in itself is like a really tough situation i mean i i, I certainly saw a lot of di uh, similarities in the, the situation that charlie was in um you know he's he's new to um the united states and I was new at the time. Um, and then as Charlie began to settle in, it was sort of bizarre how um, the scripts were mirroring real life as I was sort of settling in and stuff. Um, I probably, <laughs> I'd be hesitant to admit too many similarities between myself and Charlie, although there are undoubtedly lots. Um, there are certainly a lot of things that I admire about him. I love his positivity. I love every time he gets knocked down. <laughs> tries to get back up. I, I love that despite his many flaws, he tries to be a good friend, um, even if he usually messes it up and it's his own doing. But yeah, I'd, I'd say that there's, there's definitely things that I admire.
even though these guys might argue with me, I feel like Valentina is a version of me I'm not brave enough to be. No, no, no. Um, you are brave enough to be it. You are, you are that all the time. Yeah, see? Míralo, míralo. Um, I think what's similar, though, is our relationship, uh, which I just discovered. It's like, you know, Tom and I hadn't really been around people. Like, I've never, I don't really have friends that are from England, you know? And I don't know if you've ever really dealt with a Latina. So I think off camera, just like on camera, it was like a... What? Hi. What are you doing? What's yeah, we going? Said, we, we said a few times that, um, you know, off camera, we were sort of very fortunate to have almost been thrown together by this job because we may have never met, not just each other, but somebody like each other. It was um, a cult. It was a culture shock. Yeah, and um, and and it's nice that I do think that is reflected in the characters. They they seem on paper to be so ill suited to one another, but there is there's something intangible about it that that clearly has drawn them together. Es muy difícil conocer a alguien y conectar y que algo sea fácil. Algún día tenemos que volver ahí fuera. De hablar con ella. ¿Y qué le digo? Creo que te voy a enamorar. Mentirle, vamos. 